much money do you need to start a medical spa business? In this video, we will go through a complete breakdown for the startup costs for a med spa. There are a lot of components that go into starting your own small business. And those details are especially important when you are starting your own med spa business. Understanding the costs required to get things started are essential to creating a solid business plan. Kelly Smith and for the last 20 years my team and I have helped thousands of medical spas, plastic surgeons, and other aesthetic medical practices grow their businesses. We do this through business development, marketing strategies, sales events, coaching, and business consulting. Our team makes these valuable tip videos to help you create more success in your business. If you're considering starting a med spa, we need to look at your available capital for operating expenses and marketing, as well as defining the services that you'd like to offer at your facility. Obviously, there's a big difference between starting a 1,500 square foot facility with one or two people compared to a 5,000 square foot facility with 10 to 20 people. It also matters what services you're going to offer, meaning what kind of equipment and supplies are going to be necessary. For instance, are are you going to offer everything for face and body that's popular in the industry or are you going to niche down a bit when you get started and maybe concentrate on face only built around an injectable business that's probably the quickest and easiest low-cost option to get started you don't have to have everything to be a successful med spa business. One of the commonly made mistakes is to buy equipment instead of leasing equipment. And what that does is it ties up your cash flow. And what's usually not understood besides your startup costs of FF&E, which is your furnishing equipment and um, build out, is the operational capital, the cash that you're gonna need to do the digital marketing so that your potential clients can even be aware that you exist. Regardless of the size of the facility that you're going to open up, you need to look at your startup costs and your time frame. What date are you going to open up? What time of the year? There's a couple months to avoid. The hardest months to open up a medical spa would be July and August. It's also difficult to get started right around a holiday like Thanksgiving or Christmas, which brings us to the best times of the year to start a med spa. March, April, May, October. Those are some of my favorite months to start a med spa. Next, let's look at what services are you going to offer and how much budget is it going to take to get the initial products and services that you need in order to offer those products and services to your clients. So let's say you start with the basics, injectables, toxins, and fillers. Let's say you add something in that you know people can get regularly as well, like hydrofacial, microdermabrasion, aquafirm, some sort of a medical grade facial that's got visible results that people could come in once a month for. They can do it all year round and it doesn't matter what their skin tone is or their age. This is really critical because this is what you call casting a wide net. Almost everybody's heard of hydrofacial. If you've got something like hydrofacial, it's going to get people in the door more easily than if you're trying to sell something that no one's heard of. So what are the ones that people have heard of? Obviously, they've heard of Botox, they've heard of Cool Sculpt, they've heard of Hydrofacial. These are three solid examples of ones that are good when you're getting started so that at least the general public or your target demographic understands and knows what these services are and they're highly desirable services. They're searched for online in high numbers. And that means when people are looking for a solution to the problem that you can fix, they can find you and get into your office. When you're beginning to plan a business plan or your strategy for opening a specific location, there are certain key expenses that industry averages are important for you to be aware of. So as a startup, you should be prepared that your payroll needs to be somewhere under 30%. So typically 25 to 35% is going to be a percent of income for payroll. Rent, on the other hand, should not exceed 5%. Then you talk about marketing. That one can be a wide range. In order just to keep your market share, you need to save about 5% of your income to spend towards digital marketing and website and lead generation. If you're trying to grow, you're probably looking at 5 to 10%. If you're a startup, 
In the first six months, you could be spending even 20% of your percent of income towards marketing in order to get new clients to be aware of your services and to get them into your facility. Other key things to consider would be, of course, malpractice insurance, which runs roughly anywhere between 500 and 1,000 a month. The hidden things that most people forget about would be your software, QuickBooks, your EMR software, those kinds of systems, those all add up too. So you really need to set up about five or $10,000 for those services as well. And lastly, we get into specific equipment purchases and that's where it's important to maybe talk to an expert like me and understand what are the true prices that people are getting paid for these services? What are the consumable costs? What about the lease options and delayed payments? or looking at post-sale support, whether that's marketing and digital marketing, event support, or is it the way that they support a machine going down or needing repair? So this is an area that often sneaks up and surprises people, how important a good warranty is. And what I mean by that is if your machine goes down within 24 to 48 hours, will they have a technician on your location? Will they get you a new machine while yours is down? One of the saddest things that I deal with is when you have a, an office and you fill up a certain room, maybe it's a machine that does muscle building and fat reduction, and that machine goes down after you've spent all this money to get leads, you've closed the leads, you've got them in there, they're supposed to come in once a week or twice a week and boom, that piece of equipment goes down. That's where it's so important to know what is my support how quickly can they remedy this? Or am I just down for a week or two until they can get a technician in? And then do I have to send parts out and wait for them to get back? Sometimes it can take a month to get a machine back up and running. So warranty is critical to look at. Payment terms and delayed payment options, again, gives you the opportunity to use your cash flow for things like lead generation and client awareness. And then lastly, disposable costs. That's a big one that if you're not familiar with this industry and you haven't been an owner or you've not bought a lot of lasers or RF devices, aesthetic equipment in the past, you might not realize how critical that is to find out in the beginning before you choose which equipment you want to buy. You've all heard before, location, location, location. And one of the areas that I'm surprised about with my clients when they look for a location is you do not need to pay for prime A real estate retail spaces. Those are gonna be your most expensive spaces and they're not actually the most desirable for a med spa business or a plastic surgeon, especially if you're doing anything minimally invasive where you leave looking red or swollen or have a procedure done where you might even be taken out in a wheelchair. So if you are doing surgeries, you are better off to be a destination where you have maybe an exit in the back of the building where post-surgical patients can go out and they're not going through your lobby. The surrounding businesses are almost more important than the exact location itself. If we can find a location close to a hair salon, nail salon, massage, even a clothing boutique, somewhere that um, women are going to be circulating through and passing by, that's great. They can drop in and look at this facility, but this is not a drive-by, oh, I should stop and get Botox at a drive through No, this is, I'm gonna get Botox or I'm gonna get CoolScope, I'm gonna get something and I look online, where are the options near me? Do I like their social media? Do I like the photos of their location? And so I do like your signage to be clear and visible, easy parking, preferably free parking. And if you're doing any kind of surgery, you do need a private exit for your surgical clients after they have a procedure. And those are the main things that we need to look at. When you design the spaces, there's certain sizes that make sense for a room, whether you need plumbing or not. I can walk you through all that. I would recommend if you're thinking about diving into this industry or buying a location, you need a team of people. You need a consultant that understands this business from the inside out. You need a CPA that's got some familiarity or can work with your business consultant to understand this industry. Those are gonna be very important along with a digital marketing team that is niched in this industry because we've mentioned on other videos before, marketing to this target demographic for these sensitive services is done in a very unique way. That's why going back to the beginning, having some operating capital for marketing, which is going to be one of your biggest investments in the first six months is so critical. So you ask the question, how much does it cost to start a med spa? Realistically, a startup costs are considered your first six months of operational costs, including your payroll, your leases for your equipment, your supplies. So you're really looking at anywhere between $50,000 to a million. It just depends on how many services and staff you're going to have, the size of your 
your location, your rent, and all of that. But no matter which size you choose, you need to stack up with the industry averages as far as the expense benchmarking in your business plan. And that's where your team, someone like me, can help you do that. And it's critically important in terms of the review that you will get from the bankers. It needs to make sense. You need to have some credibility behind your numbers. You can't just pluck them out of the sky. You need to have an actual plan put together with a startup timeframe, a startup budget, opening orders, initial six months of expenditures, and at what point you will break even and begin to be profitable. Those things are all available when you work with a specialist in this industry, and those are necessary in order to set you up for success. Be sure to grab a copy of my free book for these types of tips and more. You can find it in the link below or at our website, projectedgrowthconsulting.com. If you have questions or a suggested topic you'd like me to cover in the future, please let me know in the comments below. If you'd like a free strategy call, visit our website, Projected Growth Consulting. Be sure to follow us on social media to get more tips and tricks, as well as free downloadable tools to create a successful med spa or plastic surgery practice.